GarageBand for iOS is a fantastic bit of kit. You can basically record all of your songs on it, especially when you're on your own, because of course you've got the metronome built in, you've got the click, you've got the quantization, you've got everything you could want to get your tune to line up to the finest detail. However, what about if you want to record your tune free? How are you going to do that? Because there isn't a function to change the tempo mid-song on this, like there is on the sort of desktop-based workstations. Let's have a look. On GarageBand here, I've got a new song open and I've used the audio recorder to begin with and just picked fun and clean from the more sounds menu. Just means there's no effects on it. So and that's really, I don't really want any effects because I'm going to record my own guitar part completely free. Now, we've also got to do a few things before we start. First of all, if I go to the plus symbol at the end, I need section A to be automatic because it's no longer eight bars. I'm recording to my own tempo. I'm ignoring any tempo information from the iPad. I also need to go into settings, metronome, and I need to switch off the visual counting, the actual counting itself, and the metronome. So it has absolutely no output whatsoever, which means that when I press record, it will record immediately and it will keep recording until I press stop. It's a tape recorder basically. So how am I going to make this? I'm going to do G, C, D, C, G. I'm going to record just four bars, but I'm going to put a slowdown at the end. So how am I going to do this? Well, the answer is you need to give as much rhythmic information on the guide track. So I'm not going to use this track in the song is to give enough information to the other players, that is more of me sat in a studio, the opportunity to make those instruments actually tie up. So I'm going to press record. And there we go, no sound from the metronome at all. Okay, so accounting from the guitar as well. Okay. So I attempted to put a slowdown for that D chord at the end. Let's see what happens if I add my piano to that. Let's see if it's going to actually work as a track. So you can see I've got my track there and it lasts 12, 13.2 bars. So yeah, no relation to the tempo at all. I'm gonna add a piano. Now I've got the piano here just set up um, into the garage band via the, the USB uh, to lightning connector. So I can play my my piano sounds from this into this. So I'm gonna record, you won't hear any click, and indeed the only counting I'm gonna get is from my own acoustic counting. There we go, no sound from the metronome at all. Okay, so counting from the guitar as well. Okay, so I had to mix as I went as well. So I'm gonna undo that because actually the guitar was far too loud. I couldn't really hear the piano. I've got to be able to hear my own part when I'm recording mixed in with that rhythmic information that I had before. So I'm going to just go back to here. I'm gonna go forward slightly so that I'm not having to wait and hear or hearing all my words before there again. So uh, let's try that. Um, when you press record, it's a good idea to have the instrument open as well, so that it's actually playing the moment you press record. There's no counting, remember. Guitar as well. So, it's a bit of more of a slowdown at the end than I thought there was. Another go. From the guitar as well. Okay. So there we are. I'm happy with that piano on the third attempt 
that's okay because actually the more times you listen to the tune that you've just recorded the more times you just listen through to it with all of those inflections the more accurate you're going to be so actually what you can end up doing at the end once you've recorded all the instruments you can actually go back through and record each one again if you so wish it sometimes makes a difference now i'm going to put a bass line down against that piano and guitar i'm still going to keep that guitar lower in the mix from the guitar as well Okay, those bass notes at the end are a little bit enthusiastic. Now, you, although you're not recording to a click, you can actually still drag notes. So that actually, that C on the bass, <clears throat> a snap to grid off is necessary for this because of course there is no tempo. Um. Actually, it was kind of the other way. better now I'm going to try putting some drums on as well this is where it could really unravel if you've got something which has got drums on it any mistakes or any inaccuracies are really going to show up here so I'm going to try this that sort of thing still on the keyboard it makes a difference having a keyboard it doesn't have to be a full 88 key weighted keyboard like this but if you have something that's smaller that has a good response it's often better than the actual on-screen one especially for this sort of work and there we go no sound from the metronome at all okay so counting from the guitar as well okay not sure how that went and that's okay now we've also got to be very careful that when you put a drum sound in if I go to the quantization settings it's put in a quantization for my benefit but in fact it's not for anyone's benefit at all because there is no tempo so I'm going to switch that off and then I'm going to listen back <laughs> Just that little bit there. Those, um, the bass, the hi-hat and the snare drum there. Just a little bit. Yes, the hi-hat and the kick, the snare drum are just slightly early. Now I'm going to take away the guide part because I want to see how well those three instruments, the piano, bass and drums, are gelling together. Now I'm just going to have a quick check with the quantization. He usually does it with just drums, but you've got to check. There we go. Okay, the ending I'm happy with. There's a few little gremlins going on in the beginning, but actually, if I was doing this along with that guide track, I'd really take a, a bit more care. This is really just for demo purposes, but you can see how I can line three tracks up with my own, essentially my own metronome, my own guide. So getting the guide right, of course, 
that's a real big thing. But once you've got the guide really clear, actually, you're in business.